today we are going to solve some of the questions which is asked in 2018 December CSI retro so this is the first question we have here so this first step is very simple this is called MCPPA oxidate like uh, this sulfur is converted into sulfur oxide type it's very simple and uh, in the second step this is called as a femoral rearrangement okay now we'll see the mechanism for this uh, reaction and the product also So in the first step we have yes ph in the presence of mcpba it will get converts into a stable bond o ph so here sulfur is in oxidation state of plus 4 it is stable so now the second step is involves femoral rearrangement so what is the mechanism for femoral rearrangement so i am taking one model example here this is the i am explaining a, a mechanism with this uh, starting precursor okay so this will exist in equilibrium with the this form o minus here s plus and r1 now here we have a st can hide it ch3 coo ch3 so this st can hide it gives acetate sorry acyl carbocation and acetate anion okay so now this acyl uh, carbocation and attacks to the this oxygen so now it becomes like this r1 s o COCH3 R1 this will be sorry R2 so this will be a positive charge here okay now whatever hydrogen is present here this hydrogen goes here and this bond cleaves from this uh, uh, step so now we end up with R1 yes double bond R2 so whatever acetate anion is here now that comes and then here polarization will be towards this way so this will attach to this this carbon now we will get a finally we will get a this is the product here we will get so this is the final product in the femoral rearrangement okay so now what you will do see uh, this one is looking like this only because we have a s double bond o here uh, r1 is uh, phenyl and this will be the r2 okay so now at alpha position we have a acetate just keep a acetate at alpha position i am for this i am writing product here here just keep a acetate at a alpha position and now here sulfur oxide converts into sulfur that means this will be sulfur and uh, this will be a ph so this is the uh, product in the second step in the femoral rearrangement here the product will be this one and now we have a aqueous na2co3 so what aqueous na2co3 is do here sph Sorry, sorry. This is acetate O C O C H three.
sorry CH3 so this is the product here O C O C H3 so now uh, this bond goes here and this leaves so now, now finally we end up with the so this is the product in this reaction I did not take the options I am just I am just uh, I have just copied only uh, the questions because I am I, I am not having the question paper so this is the product here we will get so this is very simple uh, first MCPV oxidation takes place on the sulfur then we have fumarole the element and this is very important recently they, they asked this question means next three four years they will be keep on asking this rearrangement and it's better to uh, remember this mechanism so just remember mechanism with this only so finally we can write the product directly if you know this one you can write product directly here this product and in the next step we have a equation to co 3 it is very easy to write the product in this step now uh, next we have a here uh, Allyl alcohol, we know that this is a short place asymmetric synthesis, uh, short place asymmetric re reaction. So, I have made a uh, two, two, three video on short place uh, reaction. So, you can go and see that video. I am not explaining the mechanism here. So, when we have a plus DET, that time we will get a alpha epoxide, and when we have minus DET, that time we will get a beta epoxide. Alpha epoxide means below the plane beta epoxide means above the plane okay so here we will get a because it is plus DET we will get a alpha epoxide so it will be above the plane this will be the BU and now we have a uh, epoxide opening recently I have made three videos on epoxide opening so here we have a base this means base catalyzed epoxide opening so you just go and refer those videos so how the base uh, how the epoxide will open in the presence of base how it opens in the presence of acid and how it opens in the presence of some other reagent so here this rearrangement is called as the this is also one of the uh, rearrangement that is called as the pine rearrangement This is called the pine rearrangement. So the mechanism we will see here for pine rearrangement. We have this one. So this will shows equilibrium with the this form because we have a base here. So they, that base will obstruct this hydrogen because high OH hydrogen is very acidic in nature. So now what will happen? And again for the this will show equilibrium with the this form. So this bond opens like this, and this negative charge comes and attacks to this carbon. So now we have a we have O minus and R. So now nucleophile comes. So this bond uh, opens this direction and the nucleophile comes and attacks to this this will be OH and this will be another OH and here CH2 and you so this is the product here we will get if it is a nucleophile nucleophile attack If it is electrophile attack, the product will be different because in the electrophile attack, electrophile goes attacks to this oxygen. This is the product in the presence of electrophile. So, uh, just uh, see here. We here we have a pH S. Sorry, pH SH. Okay. So here we have a S minus pH plus H plus so this is a this is the nucleophile okay let's see just uh, uh, compare uh, like uh, it has to be SPH 
so product i am writing product here and here r is uh, this uh, butyl group and uh, this will be one oh another oh will be here so the finally the product will be uh, comes out to be here i am writing product bu oh so this is the uh, below the plane and uh, the group which comes that should be above the plane So, because almost, almost, uh, just remember opening of epoxy in the base favor for SN2 mechanism. So, SN2 mechanism means like uh, if epoxy is opening uh, above, uh, means it's here, it's opening from the below the plane. That means the nucleophile comes from the above the plane. So, uh, this is the product A and this is the product B. So, this is the answer for Sharpless Asymmetric Synthesis. Uh, next we have here uh, the reaction of uh, B uh, this, is, this question is from inorganic chemistry reaction of B10 H14 with acetylene in the presence of AT twice S so we have C2H2 in the presence of AT twice S gives what is the product here we need to identify so initially this B10 H14 reacts with the Two molecules of AT twice S. Okay, so B10 H14 plus two molecules of ATS and it leads to form. So here two molecules entering mean two molecule of H2 will goes out. B10 H12 AT twice S and plus this will be H2 and then uh, <coughs> now we have a c2 h2 and for the c2 h2 also going inside that means again two more hydrogens will lose here so b10 h10 c2 h2 plus two moles of et sh will get here now we'll just count the number of uh, this is a carburant system so if you write the full structure full i mean if you mix everything it looks like c2 B10 H2. So this is the answer. The answer will be first. Uh, next we have the number of two center two electronic bonds. Thus that will be X and the valence electrons that will be N and skeletal electron uh, skeletal atom that will be N by using 8n minus n by 2 principle this is a principle for p4 s3 so if you want to solve this question you need to know about the p4 s3 structure if you don't know the p4 s3 structure so you cannot calculate this answer so we here the p4 s3 structure looks like p s here and again s p <coughs> p and this will be S yes. and for the P this will be S yes. okay so now uh, we have a two center two electronic bond also what is the two center two electronic bond so in case of diborane we heard about the three center two electronic bond right so here uh, this is one two three so this bond is called as three center two electronic bond that means two electrons are located on the three centers okay and when you talk about this bond this bond is called as two center two electronic bond because two electrons are located on the two atoms so two center two electronic bond is nothing but a sigma bond okay and in this case uh, x will be number of sigma bonds so how many sigma bonds are there one two three four five six seven eight nine uh, ten sorry this is a uh, this is p4 s3 i have made it a p4 s4 so this is the direct p the di di direct pass plus pass pass plus bond 
so this will be 9 uh, uh, 1 2 3 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so total 9 sigma bonds are there so this will be 9 the valence electronic bond so we have a p4 s3 so passpress is having how many uh, valence electrons 5 so 4 into 5 will be 20 and sulfur is having 6 valence electrons 6 into 3 will be 18 so this will be 38 so the number of valence electrons will be 38 now skeletal electrons we need to calculate by using this principle so we here we have x equals to 8n minus n by 2 so what is x here 9 8 into n means uh, n we don't know that we need to calculate number of skeletal atoms so this capital n will be 38 by 2 this will be 18 equals to 8n minus 38 8n equals to 18 plus 38 this will be 56 so n will be 7 so this is a 7 if you go for the answer so here we have a 9 38 7 so this is the answer then one last question here we have they have given two sets here we have three two set uh, set a includes al f6 3 minus pf6 minus sf6 and sa f6 2 minus and set b includes ba h206 2 plus calcium h 262 plus magnesium h 206 2 plus and strontium 2 plus so for a non transition metal sorry non transition complexes okay so these are all our main group elements they are non transition in nature so for non transition if you want to identify here the question is uh, the slowest ligand exchange rate is so this this concept comes under the inert complexes and ligand inert and labile complexes okay for uh, non for transition metals we know that if electron is there in easy that is a inert sorry labile and uh, if uh, t2g4 t2g5 and t2g6 that means the number of electrons in t2g are more than 3 that comes under the labile and these two comes under the labile so and t2g0 and t2g1 t2g2 and t2g3 so these comes under the inert complexes this is for the uh, d block elements so when you are talking about the p block elements so what will have how you will identify inert and label complexes there are three concepts to identify inert and label complexes the first one is charge on atom and the second one is size third one is atom to charge ratio uh, we can say that atom sorry charge by size ratio so these are the three concepts we can identify whether the complex is inert and libide so in first we will go for set a in set a al f6 3 minus the oxidation state of aluminum is here aluminum plus 3 and when we have pf6 minus and the oxidation state of pass plus here is plus 5 when we have sf6 here oxidation state of sulfur is plus 6 and when you have sf si f6 2 minus so here oxidation state is uh, plus 4 so charge on the atom how we can explain based on the charge on the atom if atom uh, charge is more then size will be less the inertness will be more this complex comes in inertness so which which atoms are having more charge they are having uh, size is less they comes under the inert so which is having less charge so they will be having more size and that comes out to be label complexes 
okay so among these uh, four which one is having more size we have a sf6 is having more size that means here in this case the slowest is he asked he asked slowest slowest ligand exchange that means you need to you need to identify which one is more inert so here sf6 is more inert so in a set a we have a sf6 is answer in a set a this is the answer for set a and now we'll go for the set b so set b we have a uh, barium calcium magnesium stanchium so these are the second year elements we have a uh, magnesium calcium barium stanchium uh, i think here beryllium will come so here as we can see here oxidation state in all the cases are same plus two in all the places oxidation state is plus two so here we cannot use this charge and the atom concept and here we can use uh, we cannot even use size also so here we can use charge sorry here we cannot use charge uh, charge by size ratio because all charges same here we can use only size concept so as we go down the atom size will increase right in a groups so according to that here we can say that by by size how you will explain if if more the size that is labile and if le less the size that is inert so in this case uh, we have magnesium here and after that we have calcium and barium and stanchium so which is more labile here stanchium will be more labile but in the question they have asked the slowest ligand exchange rate slowest ligand exchange rate is for the inert complexes so here the inert complex will be the magnesium so the answer will comes out to be in this from set a sf6 and from set b magnesium h206 the answer comes out to be 2 uh, i will ex i will make a few uh, again more videos on this uh, four marks questions i hope you understood everything in this uh, video if you have any doubts you can uh, comment on subscribe uh, you can write in the sub uh, comment box uh, please subscribe to my channel